of Mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. And this proofs in differential calculus, specifically for the chain rule. Chain rule states that we're given two differentiable functions. One is g, that's differentiable at x. The other is f, that's differentiable at g of x. And we're, we're going to take the derivative of the composition. So the derivative of f of g of x here. And we want to show that that's equal to f prime of g of x times g prime of x. And for those who are into Leibniz notation, that basically says that if we have some function of u, and we call that y, and then we know that u is also a function, so this is kind of like an onion where you have layers. You have an outer layer called f, and you have an inner layer called g, and you keep peeling those layers back until you get to x then dy, the derivative of y, with respect to x is the same thing as taking the derivative of y with respect to u first, because y is a function of u here, and then taking the derivative of u, so jumping inside of u here, and taking that derivative with respect to x. A lot of students like this notation because they think that the du's cancel and you just get dy over dx. The du's actually do not cancel. They're not fraction. Uh, this is not a numerator and denominator tradition, like we traditionally think. Uh, but it does lend itself to a better understanding or a better, I guess, uh, memorization of this formula. The proof of this is going to be somewhat math heavy, but I don't do it the way most textbooks do. I'm going to do it a very straightforward method. Let's go get into this. As with any proof, we're going to assume what we've been given. So we've been given two things, that g is differentiable at x, and that f is differentiable at g of x. So I'll write that down. And it's always a good idea to kind of give yourself a road map of where you want to end up. So I'm going to just open a new page here, and I'm going to write down what I think uh, is important for me to remember. Specifically, we want to show, and most uh, mathematicians, when they're doing a proof, they'd like to write down where they want to end up um, because it, it gives them a road map, right? You want to show that the derivative with respect to x of the composition, which is f of g of x, you want to show that that is equal to, eventually, through some work, f prime of g of x times g prime of x. That's what the uh, claim is for the theorem. Back up here, derivative with respect to x of the composition is f prime of g of x times g prime of x. And then in between these two, I'm just going to put one intermediate little step here, I'm going to use the limit definition. The, the derivative is just the limit as h approaches 0 of our function evaluated at x plus h. Let's do this. Our function is f of g, and we're going to evaluate that at x plus h, minus our function just evaluated at x, all being divided by h. And that's important to note. So we're going to go ahead and work with this. Uh, we're going to work with this intermediate limit here, uh, and try to manipulate that into becoming this derivative down here. Now, as we start this, we kind of stare at this for a little bit and go, "Well, what can I do? I don't know what f of g of x plus h is. I don't know what f of g of x is. I mean, it's, we're kind of stuck. But we can use what we've been given here. So let me open a new page." Since uh, g is differentiable at x, we can say the following. That the derivative of g at x is equal to, normally we'd say the limit as h approaches 0, but I'm going to change the wording slightly. It's just g of x plus h minus g of x over h as h approaches 0. Now if I solve this for g of x plus h, that'll tell me that h times g prime of x plus g of x must equal g of x plus h. And again, that's as h approaches 0. We'll have to keep that kind of additional notation there. 
that as h approaches zero, this should be a true statement. So instead of g of x plus h, I'm going to rewrite in our proof here that g of x plus h, I'm going to replace that picture with h times g prime of x plus g of x. Now, it, it's a little bit, uh, well, actually, I, I think that's it's pretty okay to do that. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. We get down to this nice looking picture here, but the problem is that we don't know where to go from here, right? Every step of the way, you're kind of asking yourself, now what do I do? Now what, I do? what do I do? We've used the fact that g is differentiable at x. We actually haven't used the fact that f is differentiable at g, and that's going to be useful here. So if f is differentiable at g, what can we say? For the moment, let's go ahead and just to keep our, our notation a little bit easier to see, we're going to let u equal g evaluated at x. Since f is differentiable at that value, then f prime at u by our definition of a limit is just equal to f of u plus, well, I'm already using h, so I can't, because h is being used in the, in the function g here. So I'm going to use a different letter. Let's go ahead and use k. So f of u plus k minus f of u all over k, again, as k approaches 0. So that's because f is differentiable at u, which is just g of x. So f prime at u is just defined to be the limit as k approaches 0 of f of u plus k minus f of u over k. All right. So this might help us out. Now, let me just go ahead and rewrite in here that the uh, this implies that f prime at g of x is equal to f of g of x plus k minus f of g of x all over k. Well, we're going to use that. It might not be obvious where we're going to use it, but I'll start <coughs> by multiplying both sides by k and solving for f of g of x plus k. So this gives me that k times f prime of g of x plus f of g of x must equal f of g of x plus k. Now, that doesn't really tell you much, does it? Except that if you take a look at what we have back on our previous page, we have back here, and let me just show you, we have a statement, f of something plus g of x. Okay, I'm slowly trying to get out of this horrible notation, okay? So I have f of some first item. In fact, maybe I will uh, use two different highlighting colors. So we have f of something plus g of x. And if you look at the page we were just on, so let me hop back here, I see that I have f of g of x plus something. And that turns into this picture over here. Maybe that'll help out. Remember, in mathematics, you're constantly changing from something that's useless to you at the moment to something that might be more useful. The problem here is that in this notation, we see that f of g of x plus k is equal to something. And we don't have f of g of x plus k. We have f of g of x plus h times g prime of x. But it might be beneficial or might be actually pretty safe to say that k is equal to h times g prime of x. So maybe I should write that in to convince you. Let's go ahead and let k equal h times g prime of x. Now how can we do that? I mean, why does it seem like we can do that? How, how am I saying that that's possible? Well, let's take a look at two very important statements here. 
H is approaching zero, K is approaching zero. Those are incredibly important statements because if you know that H is approaching zero here, doesn't that force K to approach zero? So isn't it okay to say that K could be actually described as H times anything, as long as that anything is finite and we know that G, the derivative of G exists at X, which means it's finite. So therefore, as H approaches zero, it's forcing K to approach zero. So it's pretty okay to let K equal H times G prime of X. If that's true, if K is allowed to be G, H times G prime of X, then this statement down here, I'll point an arrow at it, becomes, well, f of g of x plus, uh, remember k we're saying is h times g prime of x, right? And that's equal to k times f prime of g of x. plus f of g of x. So let's go ahead and, and insert that in because that's a pretty safe assumption. So wherever I saw a k in this formula here, I'm just going to replace it with uh, h times g prime of x. So let me go, go ahead and hop back to the proof here. And this tells me that we have, so I'm going to write equals over here f of f of h times g prime plus g according to this f of h times g prime plus g is just going to equal to k f prime g of x plus f g of x i'll go ahead and write that in so the limit as h approaches zero of instead of f of h prime of x plus g of x, we have, again, hop over here, we have k times f prime of g of x and let's see what else is it, k times f prime g of x plus f of g of x. And then the rest of this numerator is just minus f of g of x. Like I said, in mathematics, what we're trying to do is just manipulate forms until we get down to something we like. And look what happens, f of g of x minus f of g of x, that disappears. So this is just equal to the limit as h approaches zero of k times f prime of g of x all over h. And of course, we have mentioned what k is equal to. Go back here and you can see k is just equal to h times g prime of x. So let's go ahead and write that in. Limit as h goes to 0 of h times g prime of x times f prime of g of x all over h. The h's actually cancel and we have the limit as h approaches 0 of g prime of x times f prime of g of x. Now <coughs> That derivative, each of these derivatives, they don't, I mean, they're the definition of them may have h's in them, but remember that that's as h goes to zero. So as h goes to zero, these are actually the derivatives, g prime of x and f prime times g of x. So since there's not any h's in here, this just turns nicely into, and I'll write it in the order that we wanted it in, f prime of g of x times g prime of x. That's it. 
Now, most proofs are going to be very complicated for this, and this is one of the complicated proofs as well. Uh, however, I tried to keep it as clean as possible on one page. So we are using the fact that g is differentiable at x and that f is differentiable at g of x. You always start your proof with kind of a basic definition here. You know, you want to show that the derivative uh, is equal to f prime of g of x times g prime of x. So we're going to start with the definition of a derivative. The limit as h approaches 0 of this business. We don't know what g of x plus h is, so we have to create a relationship. Well, the relationship we were able to create, again, just a rehash, is that g prime of x is equal to g of x plus h minus g of x over h as h goes to zero. We could solve that for g of x, and that's what we did. And so, okay, well, now we know what g of x is, so we inserted that in. We get this business right here. Okay. Then we then stared at this and said, I have no clue what that is, so we're going to use the fact that f is differentiable at g to say, well, I don't want to sit here and write f of g of x and all that fun stuff. It's just too much work. So I just said, let u stand for g of x for the moment. We know that f prime of u is equal to f of u plus k minus f of u all over k. We had to use k because um, k and h are two totally different variables. They're both approaching zero, but we had to use a different letter, a different variable, I suppose. Then once I had this form written, I just said, okay, but u is just g of x. So I put that in there. And then I said, okay, now, the issue is that I have in my formula back here, let me go back, in my formula I have f of junk plus g of x. The yellow is the junk, the green is the g of x. And in the, all this work I've been doing, oops, all this work I've been doing here, uh, down at this point right here, I see, oh, I do have a statement that has f of junk plus g of x. So let me solve for that. That's what I did. I have f of junk plus g of x is going to equal this business. So that's a big clue. That, that k, which I call junk, should be the same as this picture right here. And we have to justify why that's reasonable that we can do that. That justification is that, well, listen, if we let k equal that stuff, k equal h times g prime, is it reasonable to be able to do that? Well, as h goes to zero, that forces k to go to zero. Same thing, as k goes to zero, it forces h to go to zero. So this is a perfect relationship. So I go ahead and I replace whatever I see here with h g prime. So f of g plus h g prime is going to be h g prime f prime of g of x plus f of g of x, which is right here. Uh, so I replace that in. That gets me down to here, actually. And then I get, I'm able to cancel, and I get the end result. A lengthy proof, but at least semi-clean. Mm -hmm.